Welcome class to your first flip classroom experience. So today, or during this video, I'm going to be uh, teaching you about or introducing you to piecewise functions. So I need you to have a piece of paper out so that you can be taking some notes. Um, we've already been working on this, what's on the board. I have it as a warm up, but write the inequality that represents the graph below. Um, and this is just on a number line. We're looking at only our variable x, right? So here we, whoops, let's get a little smaller there. Our x values are less than or equal to 1. And we've been practicing this in class a lot, so I'm, I'm pretty sure you've got this. How about you try this one? Hit pause for a second on the video, try it, and check and make sure you agree. And you should have gotten x is greater than 1. Um, so an open circle is going to be represented with either a less than or a greater than, and a closed circle is equal to, so it's going to be our less than or equal to, or if I go like this, you might see even better, equal to or greater than. All right, so that solid dot is equal. All right, here are a couple more. So go ahead, hit pause, check yourself, make sure you've got these, and see if you got them right. All right, so hit pause right now. I know nobody will know, but you'll know, so hit pause. Okay. So you can check your answers to the first two. Now the third one, we haven't done one together on the video, so let's try one on the video. The way that I do this is I say, okay, well, I start at negative one. So I put that value down. Even though it's not equal, I start at negative one, and I stop at six. So my domain in this case, right, we're looking at our x values, my domain is going to be between negative 1 and 6, and it's all the x's in between negative 1 and 6. Now, I look at the right side first, and I say, okay, let's see. What are my x's? Wh where is this graph? Are, is this graph less than 6? Is this graph over greater than 6? And because it's less than 6, I'm going to be here. Write this equation. x, I'm sorry, this inequality. x is less than or equal to 6. Once I've got that side done, I can go over here, and this arrow direction isn't ever going to be the opposite. So x is greater than negative 1. I read it this way. Is that true? x is greater than negative 1? Yes. Do I need an equal sign? I check. Nope. It's just greater. So that would be my inequality for that segment. Let's try some more. All right, here are three more, so please hit pause, try them, and then check and make sure we agree. All right, hit pause. All right, so check your answers, see if you got that. If you have questions I want in your notes, I want you to, on the side of your paper, uh, make a little note, maybe put a star or a circle or a bubble around it so that when you come into class tomorrow, we can go over your questions. Okay, so that, I think you're going to be okay on that just because we've uh, already talked about that. And some of you have seen this in class, we, we got to this, but when x is 3, what is y? Well, that's what I'm wondering. Okay, when x is 3, so here's my x-axis, right? When x is 3, what is y? Well, it looks like y would be 4. And Sorry, the numbers are a little off, but that's 1, 2, 3, 4. Okay, x is 3, y is 4. All right, I want you to try this. Now, notice there are three separate pieces of this graph. This is an example of a piecewise function. Uh, there are three separate pieces, but I just want you to identify when x is 2, what's y, when x is 0, when x is negative 2 and negative 3, what is y? So I'm going to give you a second to do that. Go ahead, hit pause again. Yes, this is very interactive. You have to hit pause. All right, hit pause, see what you get. All right, so this is what I get. And in past years, I'll show you the ones that students often disagree with. They often disagree with me on this one and when x is 2. So check and see. Those are the two tricky ones that you have to really think about. When x is 2, there are two things here. So you need to decide, okay, is it equal to 2 or is it equal to 3? Uh, this right here is a whole, so it really isn't equal at this point, but it is equal at this point. 
So it is the 3 and not the 2. And then over here, when we go to negative 2, we have to decide, is it up here or down here? And again, the solid dot is always going to win. I guess it's kind of like rock, paper, scissors, you know? The, the rock always wins out. No, it doesn't always win out. Rock beats scissors. Anyways, okay, that's a little off topic. Here we go. So evaluating piecewise functions. That's what we just did. If you want to title your notes uh, or this section of the notes, um, if we want to evaluate piecewise functions, we're going to be asking, okay, f of negative 5. So here's our f of function, and we know that negative 5 is our x value. So if I plug in that x equals negative 5, I want to know what comes out. So our input is negative 5. What's our output? So I'm not going to plug it into both of these. I'm only going to plug it into the one that's on the correct part of the domain. So I have to decide where does this fit? If x is negative 5, is negative 5 less than 1? Is that a true statement? Yeah, actually it is. Let's check this one. Is negative 5 greater than or equal to 1? No, definitely. Negative 5 is not greater than 1. Okay, so this is a false statement. We're not going to go and plug negative 5 in here because it doesn't work here. So this is telling me what part of the domain to look at. And since negative 5 is a part of this domain, we're going to use this function to evaluate. So we're going to go 2 times negative 5 plus 1. So negative 10 plus 1 is negative 9. So f of negative 5 is negative 9. All right, I want you guys to try. Plug in 0, see where it goes. Plug in 1, be careful, see where 1 goes. Plug in 3, see where it goes, and then evaluate whichever function you get the true statement over here. Okay? All right, so I'll give you a second for that. Go ahead, hit pause, and we'll check our answers. All right, and you should have gotten this when f, f of 0 is 1. We're still looking at this function here. f of 1 is 3. You should have been plugging into this function because at 1, when we are equal to 1, this is equal. So when x is greater than or equal to 1, whereas this one is not equal at 1, we're going to be looking at this one to find that value. When we plug in 3 for x, 3 is greater than 1, so we plug in here. All right? So again, if you have any questions about that, please write your questions down. I'd be happy to go over this in class. Okay. Uh, I'm going to skip that. We can do that in class. All right, so graphing a piecewise function. Let's go ahead and get started. So here you might want to put another title in your notes, graphing piecewise function, and then write this function down. f of x equals, this is a bracket, 2x plus 1. This right here is the function itself. And this part right here is the domain. Well, I'm sorry, the domain restrictions. Which means it's telling me which part of the graph I'm going to have my graph on. Okay, so we've got x is less than 1. So I go to x, x is 1 right here. So I'm just going to kind of put a dashed line right here. x is less than 1. So when I am on this part of the graph, in this whole area of the graph, I'm going to be having... When x is less than 1, I'm going to be looking at this function. All right. Now when I go to this side over here, I'm going to be looking at this function over here. All right. Now, you don't, I'm sorry, I guess I should have told you, you don't need to scribble and draw on your graph like this. I'm just trying to show you that this domain restriction cuts my graph into two pieces. When x is greater than or equal to 1, here's 1. All of these values are greater than or equal to 1. So all of this section over here is saved for this graph right here. So negative x plus 
plus 4 is what we're going to be graphing on this side. Sorry, y equals or f of x equals. And on this side, we're going to be graphing when x is less than 1, we're going to be graphing this function, 2x plus 1. y equals 2x plus 1. So that's the general gist of what we're doing here. I need to clean all that off so we can actually do this. Okay. Now, uh, when we were graphing lines, I gave you some strategies. And one of those strategies was using a t-chart. And I would strongly encourage that as we get started with piecewise functions. Um, we have two different functions here, right? f of x equals 2x plus 1 is one of our functions. I'd like you to write this down in your notes. And f of x equals negative x plus 4. Now, when I'm looking at this function, I'm only looking at this top row. So I want to know. I want to graph this function when x's are less than 1. Less than 1. x is less than 1. Am I going to use 1 in my chart? That's a key question here. Am I going to use 1? If it's not equal to, am I going to use 1? The answer is yes. Yes. Hopefully you already said it out loud. Don't worry. Nobody's looking at you. Nobody's going to laugh at you. <laughs> You're at home. All right. Yes, yes. You want to use 1 because that tells us as we get really, really, really close to 1, where are we going to be? And that's going to be an open circle at 1. Okay, so we also need values less than 1, and I'm going to ask you to do 3. So 1 less than 1 is 0, less than 1 is negative 1. All right, let's plug those values in and see what we get. I'm going to do this one in red. All right, so if I plug in a 1 for x, right, f of 1, plug it in, 2 times 1 is 2, plus 1 is 3. Plug in a 0, 0, that whole 2 times 0 is 0, the whole thing becomes 0, plus 1 is 1, negative 1 times 2. So you see what I'm doing? I'm taking my x value, plugging it in right here. 2 times negative 1 plus 1. Negative 2 plus 1 is negative 1. All right, if you need to use your calculator, you can. But mental math is very good practice. All right, so these are now ordered pairs, right? x comma y x comma y, x comma y. I have three points to graph. And I know I'm not equal when x is negative 1. So I'm going to have an open circle here, and this is going to be a ray. continues on forever. So I'm going to go graph this. At 1, 3, I put an open circle. At 0, 1, I'm just going to put a dot. Okay, That's the only spot on my graph that's going to be open circle. Uh, negative 1, negative 1, I'm going to put a dot again. And this is my equation in my line. It keeps going forever so I can continue. Graph a straight line with a straight edge, which I don't have at this moment. See, it's a little curvy. All right, great. I'm sure yours looks better than mine. All right. So we can double check our graph. Our y-intercept should be 1. Yes. Our slope should be 2. Rise 2, run 1. Yes. Notice how I started on the left and moved right. There's an optical illusion here. It looks like some students might tell me that's a negative slope because it looks like it's going downhill because our eye starts there and goes towards the arrow, but really we're reading from left to right. So, yeah, be careful. Okay, so it is a positive slope and it does have a y-intercept of 1 and it's less than 1 for my domain. All right, let's try the next one. So the other piece is right here. We're going to do in blue. If I plug in, I need to plug in appropriate domain values for this function. So x is greater than or equal to 1. We're also going to use 1. Notice we used 1 in both. But this time, because it's equal, what's my circle going to look like? Exactly. It's going to be a closed circle. All right, so I plug in that 1, negative 1 plus 4 is 3. All right, now we need numbers bigger than or equal to 1. So 2 and 3. Those are bigger. All right, negative 2 plus 4 is 2. 3, negative 3 plus 4 is 1. All right, and again, this is going to be a ray. So we start at 1, 3. We're going to go to 1, 3. Oh, it's the same point. All right, but 
we're filling it in only for the blue piece of the function. All right, sometimes that happens. 2, 2, 2, 2, and 3, 1. All right, so here's our graph of that second piece for the piecewise function. So earlier I stated only the blue function is going to be over here on the second function, and only the first function is going to be here on this side. Do you guys see that the domain is cut into two pieces? There's this side over here and that side over there. That's what this domain restriction is doing. It's saying x is less than 1 over here, greater than or equal to 1 over there. All right. Um, I'm going to do, I think, almost one more. I think my video is probably getting kind of long now. So um, I would like you to try to set this up and pause it right now. Try to get it set up and then check and see by hitting play again if you agree with me. All right, so go ahead and hit pause. All right, so what we see here <coughs> is these two tables, check and see. Your, don't, your tables don't have to agree exactly. As long as you have that two in both of those charts, you'll be all right. As long as these twos are, these are less than two, these x values are less than two, and these x values are greater than two. We in blue. Okay, let's graph this one first. So we've got two, six is a closed dot. Three, six, four, six, five, six, and all greater. So we're gonna, we're going to draw that graph across. All right. So this really is just the equation y equals six, and we've been working with that a lot lately. Y equals six, a horizontal line. All right. <coughs> uh, and in purple, we should have this function. So we go to 2, 4, put an open dot, go to 1, 2, 0, 0. And I know we have a slope of 2, because it says right there, slope of 2. And whoo, that would be our graph. All right, so I'm going to give you one last one for you to try and bring into class to check and see how you're doing. All right, so please do this one, bring it in, and we will practice this skill tomorrow. Thank you for watching your first video. Congratulations.